And now, it's the Burgundy and Gold Magazine Show with your host, Mike Richmond. For the next half hour, journey with us into the Redskins' past, present, and future. And now, here's your host, Mike Richmond. three and six. They were down and out. What happened after they went three and six? <laughs> they didn't lose again, baby! All the way to the playoffs! So I'm kind of thinking that this year, with my presence, it might be 16 and 0. Let me hear you. Oh, oh, oh. We got a great, great opening show for you. We got Carla Babb coming up later. She does some fantasy prognostic stuff, make you win your Super Bowl, make you win some cash, all right? We also got my man, Chris Russell from ESPN 980. I'll tell you what, he's not going to be on Brandon Banks' Christmas card list anytime soon. But we also got your boy, Mike Nelm, to with Brian Mitchell before Brian Mitchell got to town. Let's hear it! <laughs> Redskin facts and Tony Romo throws interceptions. <laughs> Mike Richmond! Let's get this show started, baby! Woo! Thank you, Superskin. You are the man. You are a legend. And welcome to Burgundy and Gold Magazine. I'm Mike Richmond, author of the Redskins Encyclopedia and the Washington Redskins Football Vault. My website is redskinshistorian.com. That's redskinshistorian.com. And yes, this is the 2013 kickoff of B&G Magazine. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I've got a great panel that I want to introduce. And actually, uh, Superskin mentioned it before. Chris Russell from ESPN 980, Redskins Insider. Man breaks a lot of stories. Also, <laughs> also a, a Redskins legend from the 1980s, uh, Mike Woo! Nelms. <laughs> Let me tell you something, this man was fearless when it came to uh, punt returns. How many fair catches did you signal for? I counted uh, two. They've got me down for seven. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? I <laughs> also want to mention uh, Mike is a member of the NFL 1980s All-Decade Team, three-time Pro Bowler, and has a Super Bowl ring from Super Bowl 17. Thank you very much, guys. He's got, got the ring with him. Uh, Redskins coming off a dramatic 10 and 6 season. Uh, as Superskin mentioned, they won their last seven games, won the NFC East for the first time since 1999. Uh, unfortunately, got knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, and now, as we speak, 3 and 0 in the preseason. Very high expectations for this year. Uh, everybody's anticipating a great season for the Redskins, and we're going to examine that right now. Okay. Guys, the big story, obviously, in the offseason, Robert Griffin III had the injury in the playoff game, uh, lost to Seattle, uh, rehabilitated himself in the offseason, hasn't seen any time in the preseason thus far. The big question on everybody's mind, I know this, will he start in the season opener on September 9th against the Eagles? As we sit here, there's no reason to think that he won't. I mean, they have said consistently he is on track to be ready for week one. He's expected to be cleared. Um, and as long as he has no setback, which nobody really can control, but there's been no setback so far, guys, and that's huge news because I always thought there would be a setback along the way, and they've been consistent. I've talked to Robert. I've talked to Mike uh, privately, publicly. I mean, they swear up and down that there's been no setback, no reason to be concerned. Dr. James Andrews has personally told me he has smashed every single obliterated every single test, every single exam that they put him through. So there's so far no reason to think that he won't be there for week one. Okay, well let me throw this scenario out. Um, what about waiting until after the bye week for Griffin to start? Meaning that uh, the Redskins have a, a bye after their first four games. Mm -hmm. uh, a pretty soft schedule, I'd say, during those, uh, those four weeks. Uh, I'd say the Packers would be the toughest game sure. uh, during that period. Let him come back after the bye week. Uh, it'll be October 13th against the Cowboys. Uh, what do you say about that, Mike? I would like that. I, I would prefer that if, if I were um, 
a person who, whose um, opinion mattered. <laughs> uh, with, with the severity of the injury that he had, uh, I would rather be more conservative than anything else. And with the career that we anticipate that he could possibly and should have, why rush back for just a few games? Uh, I would let Cousins go until that time or Cousins blows up. And I don't think that he's going to blow up, and I, I think that that would be reasonable to, to wait till that, uh, till that occurred before uh, I put Robert in. Right. Well, actually, uh, I agree with that. The severity of the injury, uh, this was not his first ligament tear. He had the ACL in, in college. Now he's had a, another uh, reconstructed ACL, LCL. Mm -hmm. I mean, one more knee injury, his, his career could be over. Yeah, and, and so. I've always been more of the conservative school of thought, as Mike basically is, because, and I don't think it's being that conservative, he will start, assuming that he does start on Monday night, September the 9th in week one, that's eight months exactly to the day mm -hmm. from his surgery. Mm -hmm. Mike Shanahan has consistently said, Dr. James Andrews has consistently said seven to nine months. So Mike, what do we get if we add four weeks to eight months exactly? We get nine months. Now, is that being overly cautious maybe but it's mm -hmm. being smart cautious and more importantly another important word patient right well and also uh dr andrews and shanahan don't want to repeat of the ridicule that existed after the uh, playoff loss to uh, seattle they yeah. don't want that again i mean there was a lot that cascaded down on there's them, a so. lot untold to that story well, let me, let me throw this out. In terms of the back and forth between uh, Griffin and Shanahan uh, in recent weeks, uh, Griffin saying he wants to play, Shanahan saying, well, you know, everything's on track, like you mentioned. Uh, I want to throw out a comment. Uh, I was talking to Darrell Young after the, the Bills game on Saturday, and I asked him, you know, what do you think about these comments by Robert that, you know, if you read between the lines, yes, he wants to be out there on the field. He wants to play. And Darrell was saying, well, we, we love a guy like that. We want him out there on the field. I mean, that's, that's the, why we voted him a captain, and we really like that type of leadership. Was, was Joe Theismann like that? A lot of our athletes are like that. I mean, you want to be a part of when When you get injured, it's weird. But as, as much as everybody tries to make you feel in, included, you don't feel included. You don't feel like you're a player anymore. Once you get injured and you don't play. And, and it's, it's lonely, it's weird, it's strange, and you want to get back out there. And especially when you think that you're healthy, you're ready to go, and you don't want to be held back. And, and I would expect that Robert would do that, and I'm not surprised that he's asking to do that. But mm -hmm. others will have to uh, govern and not allow uh, an athlete to, to have his way. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I know this has been tossed around media-wise and uh, Redskins fans modifying the read option uh, maybe Robert not running the ball as much but turning him more into a traditional type pocket passer your thoughts on that Chris? I don't think you'll see it period um, because it's it's really up to Robert quite honestly mm -hmm. to make it all come together and, and work and, and the read option for those and the read zone is designed to run the football for the running back to run the football that's what it's designed to do, but it's also designed to even it up at 11 on 11. And the great thing about the read zone is you can pass out of it, which you started seeing week six of last year, the win against Minnesota, and you started seeing it in abundance the rest of the way, is you can run with Robert out of it, you can run with Alfred or the running back out of it, or Robert could fake it and pass out of it, which is the way it's going to be lessened from a pure running play with two options on the run. Again, option one of that two options being handed off, option two, the lesser of two options, Griffin ripping it out and running with it, you're gonna see more passing out of the read zone as opposed to just the two-pronged running choice. Right, well with that more passing, is this uh, the type of trend, uh, the, the type of uh, offensive scheme that's going to last in the coming years. I mean, look what we saw with the Wildcat formation. I mean, that was like a, you know, one-year wonder. Yeah, I mean, if it works, then it works, and you're going to see a lot more of it. If it doesn't work, then you'll see it go away. As far as Robert running, uh, what he needs to do is just go down two steps sooner. That's all he needs to do is stop, stop challenging people. Just go down two steps sooner, step out of bounds, get out of the way. That's all he has to do. He needs to keep running like he's been doing, and he'll be successful and will do well. But uh, the whole thing was just he stayed up just a hair too long. Right. 
Get down. I think it'll keep working if you have the right quarterback, and Robert is the right quarterback. Why? Because not only can he run and he's that run threat, but because he's a dynamic passer. He proved last year he's very proficient, very accurate, and turnover-free, short to mediate. Now I expect them to open up the last, the top third, if you will, to quote-unquote take the lid off of the offense and stretch things vertically a lot more if you have a healthy Garcon, a healthy Fred Davis. Remember, they didn't have that yes. last year. That's so right. I think right. the way Reed zone continues to evolve mm -hmm. and work, and Mike, I might be missing something, no, right. is if you have a passing quarterback mm -hmm. who can also use Reed zone. That's why it's different than Wildcat, because Wildcat quarterbacks, i.e. Pat White, could not consistently Tim Tebow throw the football. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, actually, I, I did ask Bobby Beathard that question, the man that uh, found you in the Canadian Football League. And he said, no, you cannot change his style of play. You can't make him into a pocket passer. His style of game is, you know, being deceptive like that and, and throwing defenses off by, you know, having that ability to run. Sacrifice two yards. Right. You, you, just, you just can't, you keep, know, keep running, uh, play with him like that. What's that? Sacrifice two yards. That's all. Keep running. Just sacrifice two yards. Go down just a hair sooner. Right. Step out of bounds just a hair quicker. And, exactly. And the other thing is, if you're in the pocket and you can't move or you don't have the element of being able to move, you're going to get hurt and hit anyway and take a beating anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. look, boys and girls, it's football. I mean, it's tackle, bullets start flying for real. They're coming to get the quarterback. So you darn well better be able to move and buy yourself time and escape. Robert has to do a better job of also seeing – different receivers that he missed a lot of quite honestly and i'm not trying to be critical he missed plenty of open receivers in a quick read offense they didn't ask him to get to a second third and fourth read it's hard to do that in the nfl nowadays mm -hmm. but you go back and you look at the coach's tape i mean there's plenty of times where he missed receivers he'll be so much more comfortable from a mental aspect this year and he'll i think be able to see those receivers and anticipate them being open before they're even actually open. Right. Uh, quickly, guys, I just want to uh, touch on what's happened thus far in the preseason. In terms of the Redskins offense, you mentioned uh, opening up the offense more. I mean, we've seen some uh, really good stats out of the offense in the game against the Bills, for instance, 452 yards. The first team offense with a third string quarterback scored 10 points, a touchdown and a field goal on the first two drives. Is this just a tease or is this I mean, Pierre Garçon said this is going to be the most prolific offense in NFL history. Is that a bit of an exaggeration? <laughs> uh, Mike, you weigh in on this because no. you played this game. <laughs> I think Pierre's one. nuts. But you know what? I love you, Pierre. I love the bravado. They've got a ton of potential. But, I mean, you got to hit the nail on the head, man. So talking it is one thing. Walking it is another. So we'll see. I would say this. The New England Patriots in 2007 scored 590 points. The Washington Redskins last year scored, by, uh, by, by, by my account, uh, they scored uh, 436 points. That's a lot of points to make up from one year to the next. Now, that doesn't mean they were number one in a lot of categories last year, running yards, uh, running yards per play, passing yards per play, passing yards per attempt, all those different numbers. And Mike Shanahan loves numbers. And that's all great. But the biggest number that they have to do to keep the offense going in the right direction and to keep this team going in the right direction is the one that you look at, and that's a, a lack of turnovers, which when was the last time right. we saw that about a Redskins The ratio offense? was excellent last year. All right, let's uh, uh, talk more about this, the, uh, the upcoming season. I want to get to the defense as well in the uh, second half of the show. You're watching Burgundy and Gold Magazine. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> We all know how bruising football can be, but just ask a cheerleader for the Washington Redskins about the injuries she sustained doing the squad's complex dance moves and drop splits. Cheerleading may look like fun, but it actually involves an incredible amount of stress on your body. I've experienced many injuries throughout my career, everything from pulled hamstrings to sprains and even lower back pain. Setbacks that chiropractic care has always helped me fully recover from. If you do develop pain, a chiropractor can help identify and treat it. For more information, visit yes, the numeral 2 chiropractic.com. Welcome back to Burgundy and Gold Magazine. I'm your host, Mike Richmond, and 
We're going to talk about uh, the Redskins defense. I want to start off with that. Let me also say that uh, we'll have a special, special guest coming up later in this segment. Fantasy football expert Carla Babb will be joining us. And I also want to mention, listen, you're not going to trick her. She knows who to pick and who not to pick. So stick around. Also, I want to say that uh, both Chris and Mike were previous guests on my show on BNG Magazine. So I want to thank both of you guys very much. Thank you. All right, we talked about the offense. We talked about the offense in the, in the first segment. Got to touch on the defense. All right, we know they have their core guys. Ryan Kerrigan, Brian Arakbo's back. Uh, London Fletcher, uh, the Iron Man, back for his 16th season. Uh, Barry Cofield, Stephen Bowen, those guys. I mean, they're the core guys. What is going to happen with the defensive backfield? That was the real soft spot on the defense last year. Through the first nine games, they allowed 300 yards per game. Have the Redskins done enough to shore up the defensive backfield? Because uh, they drafted three defensive backs, but Philip Thomas is out for the year. Uh, Bakari Rambo, I mean, he's been toasted. Uh, in the preseason a number of times. Well, he hasn't been they, toasted in coverage. Right. He's been, he, he's with been the run. A poor time, but he was very good on Saturday against Buffalo. On one particular series, he made three outstanding plays, diagnosing, taking better angles, all of that. Here's, here's what I will say. There are going to be moments that you are going to have to live with the ups and the downs, the roller coaster of David Amerson, Bakari Rambo, just like you've had to with D'Angelo Hall and others. That's going to happen in this league. That's going to happen in this game with 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", wide receivers who can run like deer. It's just going to happen. So get it through your mind that there are going to have some moments at times where you want to pull your hair out. But the thing about them is that Amerson is a ball hawk. Philip Thomas, ball hawk. Baca and I know he's out. Bakari Rambo, ball hawk. They'll create turnovers. And then the biggest thing, and Mike, I, I think this is the biggest area that you help out of secondary, is their pass rush is so improved. Mm -hmm. Arakpo, healthy and back. Brandon Jenkins, who, you know, I've gotten to cover the last couple weeks and I just had it on my radio show this week. I mean, the way they're using these guys, Doc Walker likes to call it nasty nickel, putting mm -hmm. Kerrigan as a down lineman, having him bull rush from uh, inside with the two outside. The other day against Buffalo, they had six linebackers on the field at the same time. Six wow. rushing the quarterback. That's how wow. you help a That's secondary. Right. That's, That's Jim Hazard, right? right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And Raheem right. Morris and... And Bob Slowick, that, but that's, mm -hmm. is it not? That's how you pr help that's the young secondary? Yes, yeah. Richie yeah, Pettibone sure. was, was very much like that, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, Richie was, uh, was a brain. Right. Yeah. I should say that uh, Mike was originally a uh, defensive back uh, for converted to kick returner. Yes. But, yeah. but oh. you know, uh, w the one thing that th they must do a better job of is tackling. And uh, you mentioned Bakari Rambo, and he struggled the first two games much better on Saturday against the Bills. David Amerson struggled a little bit Saturday. You know, you have to, I mean, the position requires so much physical skill, but also mental skill angles and, and how you get to a guy and how you size them up and not only size them up, but finishing them off. And because you can't practice like you guys yeah, used to be able yeah. to do, you know, they, they practice technique, but there's no substitute for the real life thing. Yeah. Quickly, are we, are we gonna see uh, Brandon Merriweather? I mean, what, what's his status? You're going to see him. Lenar Jackson, for that matter. Well, you're going to see Brandon, uh, you know, this Thursday in, in Tampa as, as we do this show. Um, you're going to see him for about a half, and assuming he comes out of that, I believe you will see him week one. Now, the only question is, has Brandon lost a step after the torn ACL and all the other preceding knee injuries? Mm -hmm. Based on what I've seen in practice, the answer to that is so far probably – but until I see him go full speed, which I've never seen him go full speed yet, but he's definitely been ramped up. And I think if that guy is healthy, because yeah. he's a strong safety with strong safety tendencies, but he's got so such great athleticism that you can use him in coverage. You can use him as kind of a corner safety hybrid mm -hmm. who can – you know, rotate out on receivers while you blitz corners from the edge, which Jim Haslett loves to do. Right. Well, I mean, I see a Redskins team right now that's looking like a real football team. You were on my show uh, after the 2010 season. We actually discussed that, how uh, Shanahan was starting to have his, his fingerprints on the team, developing uh, character players, um, stability on the roster mm -hmm. this past offseason. Lorenzo Alexander was the only named player to, to leave. Other guys restructured their contracts. Santana Moss, uh, 
brought back D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they've yeah. got almost the same roster as last year. I want to ask you, Mike, this is what we were talking about before. This is what you had mm -hmm. in the 1980s yeah. uh, during the Joe Gibbs glory era. You had stability on that roster. How important is that? It's very important. Uh, when guys know each other, you know how to play together. And there's a comfort there and there's a knowledge of you can make it through any situation so you don't panic, you don't freak out, and you, don't do, you don't do strange things when, it's, uh, when you can least afford it. So um, the comfort zone is much increased when you have that kind of continuity and uh, consistency. And chemistry. You know, chemistry, yeah. Right, and, exactly. and good character, too. I mean, you know, when you have good guys that you know you can go to football war with and that you enjoy also hanging out with, and that was part of the reason that they went to Richmond. Depends you, on your yeah. definition of character. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we had some characters on, that, on the team when I was there. Well, I mean, well, well characters is different than character. <laughs> yeah, you can, right. or, wait, character is different than Adam character, and Adam character is different than character. Oh, How about that? We kind of put it all I together. <laughs> You know, real quickly, one thing about the secondary, they call themselves the Wolf Pack because they're, say, they're always okay. together, always together, always hanging out, which is secondary. And it just and I love Raheem Morris and Jim has. I mean, to me, I'm, I'm in love with this defense. I, I think this defense is going to be fantastic. I like the sound of that, Wolf Pack. All right. Right. Don't talk it if well, you're not going to walk. Well, speaking of Wolf Pack. Hi, guys. Hi there. Hello. Look who's here. Much better than a Wolf Pack. <laughs> Harlan Babb, fantasy football expert, actually a graduate of NC State. So you like the Wolf Pack, right? <laughs> well, she's kind of a, uh, she has both UNC and NC State. Uh, kind of a little bit of a paradox there. She, she dominated North Carolina. All yes. right, there you go. Now, Carla, I understand you're the commissioner of two fantasy football leagues, a Yahoo League and an ESPN League. Is yes. that correct? Uh, actually, I'm only the commissioner of one this year. I'm the champion of the other. Oh, so. well, excuse me. <laughs> oh, wow. But it's going to be a great, I think it's really going to be a great fantasy year. Right. She knows her stuff. All right, take it away. We're going to hear uh, from Carla two studs, two duds, and two players to watch in fantasy football this year. Okay, so my two studs. You know the first one. He hails from the Washington Redskins. Running back, <laughs> Alfred Morris. You've heard about him already. He's amazing. I like that he has a year of experience under his belt. And what I really like is that he has Mike Shanahan because Mike Shanahan has a great history with running backs. Look at what he did to Clinton Portis. Look at what he did with Terrell Davis in, um, in Cleveland. I think it's going to be a great year for Alfred Morris, and I think he's got everything going his way as long as he can stay healthy. My other stud is a tight end, and with fantasy football, you don't generally draft tight ends super early, but with this guy, you want to, and that is Jimmy Graham from the New Orleans Saints. That's a really good That's an excellent He's pick. amazing. You've got uh, 982 yards last year, 85 receptions, nine touchdowns. Let me simplify that. One out of every nine times this guy catches the ball, he is in the end zone, and he's giving you an extra six. Pick him up. Caught a TD against the Redskins last he year. He did. He did. Had <laughs> right. several big catches. I saw him live in color, and he's pretty good. Yes. And Drew Brees but likes him. Great vertical leap. But Absolutely. speaking of Drew Brees, I do want to say that if you are in a fantasy league and you have a top five pick, you need to pick one of the Fab Five quarterbacks. I'm talking about Drew Brees. I'm talking about Tom Brady. I was telling you this uh -huh. earlier. I'm talking about um, you've got Aaron Rodgers. You've got Peyton Manning. You've got Matt, Matt Ryan. If you get a top pick, Matt Ryan on down the list, grab one of them. So you go Matt Ryan over no, RG3? You would go Drew Brees. No, oh. I asked that question. Well, well, what about RG3? What about Where does he Manning? fit into this equation? That's a good question because RG3, he's a, he's a great second tier. I mean, you've got those t Fab Five that are just amazing. And then after those Fab Five, you've got to pick, do I want my stud, my Alfred Morris, or do I want to go with an RG3, RG3. and wait for him the, the second round? When you say second tier, though, is that predicated on him staying healthy? I mean, how, how does his health fit into all this? I mean, health is huge with anyone, so it's always a gamble. All right, your, uh, your duds. My duds. Okay, I'll be quick on these guys because I don't <laughs> like talking about bad players. We've got Darren McFadden, a running back from the Oakland Raiders. Ho-hum running back, horrible team. I don't think I've ever seen him play a season where he's had more than 13 games to stay healthy. Don't, don't take him. The other guy is from the Dallas Cowboys. I'm picking DeMar uh, DeMarco Murray as my dud. As a dud. Yes. You like that pick. I understand that it's a controversial pick, but um, 
he only had one game over 100 yards last year, and that was the first one. And we all know about the, the offensive line being poor, and now that the new coordinator, Bill Callahan, is here, it's going to make it better. And you guys say, to watch. No, no, I say he has to have a magic wand to keep him healthy, and it's not going to happen. Uh, my guys to watch, I like the wide receiver from the San Diego Chargers, Chargers Malcolm Floyd. Floyd has, uh, he, he's going to be the guy that I think Philip Rivers is going to pass to because Alexander is injured. He's out with an ACL. And now that the curse of Newark Turner has been lifted from the Chargers, <laughs> I can't wait to see what he's capable of doing. And my last guy, I did go to UNC Chapel Hill, but this has nothing to do with my pick. I am picking running back Gio Bernard from the Cincinnati Bengals. A rookie. A rookie. Love him. Love him. I think that he could be the next Alfred Morris. Okay. Just a few seconds left. Let's go around the table. We want predictions. That's what everybody wants to hear. Let's start with you, Chris. Predictions on the Redskins this year. Uh, I think the Redskins, uh, with or without Robert, so I'll, I'll just say it as a baseline prediction, go 10-6 and six and win the NFC East Woo! and advance to either the second round or, or the conference championship. However, I do not think they're Super Bowl or bust material. Okay, Mike? Wow, I just, I had them um, getting into the playoffs and I hadn't gone any further than that. <laughs> okay, Carla. I have them starting off four and one, beating the Eagles. I think they're a little overrated. And I have them finishing 10 and six and making the playoffs. Okay. See, great minds think alike. We like Gio Bernard and we think the Absolutely. Redskins 10 and six. I'm gonna go 11 and five Ooh. and a deep push through the playoffs. A deep push. Deep push. What does that mean? Deep push. Could mean the NFC Championship game. All right. Okay, I also want to throw in Super Skins pick. He's going 12 and four and a spot in the NFC Championship Super game. Super Skin wins one of He's the man. You listen to Super Skin. All right. Hey, you know what? You know there's Cowboy fans watching because they always watch Redskin stuff all the time. Let me get an RG3. 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 Now, I know, I know Chris Russell always breaks the Redskins news all the time, but I got a breaking news story from Ashburn. Richard Crawford is out for the year. Redskins doing punt returner tryouts on Monday. Mr. Mike Nellis, please come out <laughs> to Redskins Point. Mike Nellis, Mike Nellis, Mike Nellis, Mike Nellis. Let's go, baby. Well, well, thank you very much for tuning in to Burgundy and Gold Magazine. I'm Mike Richmond. My website is RedskinsHistorian.com. That's RedskinsHistorian.com. We'll see you again next time. For now, hail to the Redskins. Tons of Washington, rock!